Hello cat. Um, it's very different because, you know, we're trying to bring more content to the magazine while maintaining the social distancing at the same time. So we're here interviewing Andrea Ortega on Zoom. I'm Maya Lopez. And I'm Javis Flores. Okay, so let's get started. Um, when did you start doing art? Uh, pretty much my whole life. Because <laughs> you never, I don't know, seriously, about like two years ago. <laughs> okay. Um, when did you figure out, like, your type of style of art? Hmm. I don't really have a style of art. I always try to improve in everything that I can every day. Um, what, what exactly inspired you actually to start doing art? Like when you actually started getting into it, what really inspired you to start? My older brother, he used to do art a lot before he stopped and I just wanted to be like him. Nice. Um, from looking at some of your drawings, some of them are realistic and then some of them are not so realistic and then sometimes you combine them. Is there any reason for that? No, it's just mostly what I feel like at the time. It's just, you know, sometimes I really love drawing portraits or I really love painting just weird stuff. Do people criticize the way you draw? Mm. Sometimes. Sometimes they'd want more shading or less bold lines, but I don't know. I tend to try to improve on what I think needs improvement. Um, what is the piece that you're the most proud of? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have a piece that I'm most proud of. I don't think I've made my uh, masterpiece. <laughs> I just tend to hopefully maybe I'll get there one day, but I just don't really like, I don't really like any of my art. Um, do you actually, have, have you ever thought of sp spreading your art or by what I mean, like branching yourself out to different types of art, like music, writing? Any types of that soon in the future? Uh, I'm not really good at writing, and I'm not great at anything besides painting. So I don't think I will. Hmm. What okay. do you use the most? What do I use the most? Mm -hmm. What medium? Oh, uh, acrylic painting. I pretty much use acrylic 70% of the time. Any other time is just uh, ink. Do you, do you ever see yourself changing your style? I don't know. Maybe one day, but it's just not something you can be like, yeah, I still want to change my style into this later on. But... If it happens, it happens. How often do you create art? Mm, almost every day. I try to practice every day at least so I don't lose my uh, muscle memory. Awesome. What, what motivates you the most when you create any kind of art? I really am motivated by my friends. I love showing my friends anything I make, especially when it's really dumb and I know that they'll enjoy it. Um, what is your point of view on modern art? Modern art? Like the duct tape banana wall? <laughs> well, just <laughs> any modern artist now these days. And uh, how do you compare to old art? Hmm. I really love old Renaissance paintings, and I really love some modern art today. Like, 
I think it's important to know where we came from, what thinking, what was great art to today, what we think is art. Because there's not really a definition of, oh, this of course is art. This is what art is supposed to be. Art is just on a spectrum of things and you can think a banana on a wall is art versus some great renaissance painting on a ceiling of a chapel. Interesting. Um, excuse me. Do you, um, are you, are you willing to try to help out on the, in the art community? And if so, how would you do it? Mm. I don't know. I don't know what's considered helping art community besides, you know, going to museums or going to local art shows and trying to support artists and everything that they do. Right. Um, do you have any advice for any aspiring artists? Mm. Do what you like to do and... There's always room for improvement. Hmm. Do you see yourself um, following your own advice when you're doing art, or do you just like only give it to other people and do everything you do just by freehanding it? I always try to follow my own advice because I don't want to be, you know, a hypocrite. Because I know there's always improvement in my art, and I always try to find the improvement. And if I can't, then I try to get others' opinions on what might me, what might need more improvement. Nice. How do you <laughs> feel about like, oh no, I guess you can say vulgar paintings, drawings that shows very subtle things or very immature things, if you know what I'm saying? Like a nipple on one drawing or a little oh. thing that's more human accurate. How would you, what's your point of view on that? I, <laughs> I, I think the human body is beautiful in every way possible. And I wish that students would be able to express that beauty more often than they're allowed to. And, I don't know, I always approve of quote-unquote vulgar paintings or art pieces because I think not only is it good practice for, you know, portraits and other movement-based uh, pieces, but I think it's just always amazing. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you feel like if... Uh... And for instance, like a child, he um, he's doing something art and people dislike it. Do you think he should change it just for his fans, or do you think he should keep doing what he wants to do? I and think he should on his path. I think he should just keep doing what he wants to do, because like, sure, there's always going to be people who's just like, no, that's so weird and ugly. You should just change it to whatever. Uh, it's Art is not, it doesn't matter what other people think. It's what matters what you have to say in your pieces of art. It shouldn't matter what other people think. <laughs> yes. Um, what, what exactly do you think is the limit to a person's potential when they're doing their own stuff? Like, do you ever think there's a limit? Like, let's say they put something, like, politics in there or something that's like a media that's like not really for everyone do you th do you think there's a limit to that no i don't think so i think art is a form of expression and you should always express yourself in your art even if it's political or uh you know things like that i think it's you know what you feel in that moment and what you make in that moment is what your message to the world is. There should be uh, no limit on that. Um, would you say that um, you can just live off of art? Or do you think it should mostly be like a secondhand thing? Like 
I can fall on if my other thing doesn't go to plan. No, I think you can fully live off of art. Uh, there's always a demand for something, you know, art commissions, murals, uh, literally anything. Uh, people will, if you, if you have a message and people really love your message, or if you make things that people just enjoy, then there's always going to be a uh, demand for that and people will buy that or help you in your journey of art. Do, do you ever see yourself critiquing other people's art or at least helping with uh, helping them with it? Uh, I always try to help. You know, if they ask for help, I always try to help because... You know, it's one of those things where if you can't see your mistakes for yourself, then maybe you could get a second uh, opinion over what your mistakes could be or where you fault in that area of art. Or not art, but like... Mm, what's that word? Technique. Nice. Um, let's see, let's see another thing. Um, actually, do you think art is getting represented good now these days? What? Do you, do you think art's getting represented good? Do you think it's actually still very alive today, or do you think it's dying right now? I think it's booming, in a way. Because not only are people... Not only great people who are great at art making a living off art, but also people who uh, just draw things like art commissions. People will always want art commissions and will pay for those. And not only will businesses want, you know, cool murals on their walls for people to when they come in to look at, it's one of those things where I don't think art will ever die for that because there's always a demand for it. And I think there are some areas where they want it to die, like school systems where they're trying to kick out the art departments and literally any type of self-expression there is. But I don't think it will ever die or be on a low scale. I think it's being represented even more. Very interesting. Um and here's my final question. How do you feel about companies owning people's art, such as, let's say, Marvel or, Dis or DC, when one of their artists makes something, and but the company claims them, and the artist does not get too much recognition for their own creation because it's owned by their company they were working for? Mm. It's hard to determine that stuff since it's on such a legal scale of you sign this contract, we own what you make now. And sure, it's owned by the company, but it is someone who has put their uh, own style of what they make on. And of course, it will always be the artist, but it is the company who owns it, which is kind of sad, but it's nothing... It's all legal stuff and copyright and yada, yada, yada. Hmm. Tell us about your base experience this year. I think this year was my best year at base. Because I not only got, I got two pieces done. I got scored pretty high for both of them, which was always nice. Uh... Always sad that you I didn't go to state, but you know, understandable. There are some really good pieces this year, so yeah. And I also got to meet really cool people who we were all just complimenting each other's pieces this year, and it was just really nice. So that was the interview with Andrea. Thank you for doing this with us. No problem. Time out of your day to let us interview you. Stuff. Not like I'm doing anything. <laughs> Self quarantine, baby. <laughs>